Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the anniversary of the dedication of the Basilica of St. Mary Major, one of the major basilicas in Rome. And as we offer this Mass in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary, let us pray that we may be like her, faithful and obedient children of the Father. Let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate the Eucharist by calling to mind our sins and by begging the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pardon the faults of your servants, we pray, O Lord, that we who cannot please you by our own deeds may be saved through the intercession of the mother of your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The whole congregation of the children of Israel arrived in the desert of Zin in the first month, 
and the people settled at Kadesh. It was here that Miriam died, and here that she was buried. As the community had no water, they held a council against Moses and Aaron. The people contended with Moses, exclaiming, Would that we too had perished with our kinsmen in the Lord's presence. Why have you brought the Lord's assembly into this desert, where we and our livestock are dying? Why did you lead us out of Egypt, only to bring us to this wretched place, which has neither grain nor figs nor vines nor pomegranates? Here, there, is not even water to drink. But Moses and Aaron went away from the assembly to the entrance of the meeting tent, where they fell prostrate. Then the glory of the Lord appeared to them, and the Lord said to Moses, Take your staff and assemble the community, you and your brother Aaron, and in their presence order the rock to yield its waters. From the rock you shall bring forth water for the congregation and their livestock to drink. So Moses took his staff from its place before the Lord, as he was ordered. He and Aaron assembled the community in front of the rock, where he said to them, Listen to me, you rebels. Are we to bring water for you out of this rock? Then, raising his hand, Moses struck the rock twice with his staff, and water gushed out in abundance for the people and their livestock to drink. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you were not faithful to me in showing forth my sanctity before the children of Israel, you shall not lead this community into the land I will give them. These are the waters of Meribah, where the children of Israel contended against the Lord, and where the Lord revealed his sanctity among them. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as in Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers has tested me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia, alleluia, we kain mo, o nakikinig ako sa iyong mga salita. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, 
Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, our readings today are about stories of serious blunders that significant figures in the Bible committed. In our first reading, we heard the blunder that Moses had done. The Israelites who were still journeying in the desert complained again. Noong una, nagre-reklamo sila dahil wala silang makain. Kaya binigyan sila ng Diyos ng makakain. Ngayon, nagre-reklamo sila dahil wala silang mainom. They were complaining because there was no water in the desert. And so Moses and Aaron consulted God about the complaint of the Israelites. And God gave instructions to Moses on what to do. God said, Take your staff and order the rock to bring forth water. But what did Moses do? He did not simply took his staff and ordered the rock to bring forth water. Irritation, annoyance for the people took the better of him. And because of that, he did something that was not instructed to him. He called the people of God rebels. He said, are we to bring forth water from this rock? Are we to bring forth water from this rock? And then he struck the rock twice. This was not part of God's instructions. And because Moses did something that was not told to him by God, God punished Moses. And what was the punishment? God said, 
you will not be able to enter the promised land. Just a few days ago, we heard in our first reading how God praised Moses. And God praised Moses because Moses followed every instruction of God. But when Moses did not follow faithfully what God wanted him to do, because Moses failed to show the sanctity of God, Moses was punished. The leader of God's people will not be allowed to lead the people to the promised land. In our gospel, we heard the story of the blunder committed by Peter. Jesus asked his disciples, Who do you say that I am? And Peter gave the right answer, You are the Christ. You are the Son of the living God. And Jesus praised Peter for that, saying, Blessed are you, Simon, son of John. You were able to give the right answer, not because you are wise, not because of your own knowledge, but because of my heavenly Father. This has, has been revealed to you by my Father. And so Peter was praised because he allowed God to work through him. But a little bit later, when Jesus openly shared to his disciples what will happen to him in Jerusalem, that he will suffer, he will be put to death, and he will rise again. Pride got the better of Peter. And Peter said, God forbid, nothing, not, no such thing will happen to you. Just a few moments ago, Peter was praised. And now Jesus told Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Peter was called Satan. He was reprimanded because he was thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. My dear brothers and sisters, our readings today is an important lesson to leaders, whether we be leaders in society, in business, in the church, in our own families, or whatever form of leadership we take. Leadership is about following God. Leadership is about obeying God. If we want to be efficient leaders, we must lead according to how God wants us to lead. Because the moment that we lead according to our own style, according to our own ways, according to what we want, then we are doomed to fail. This is also an important lesson to all of us that if we want to be successful in any endeavor, if we want to be efficient in our work, in our task, we must learn to obey. We must learn to follow instructions. We must learn to abandon ourselves to the will of God. If we allow God to work through us, we will be successful. We will be able to fulfill what is expected of us. But the moment we insist on what we want, then we are doomed to fail. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate the, me the memorial of the dedication of the Basilica of St. Mary Major in Rome. The Basilica of St. Mary Major is an important church because it is the oldest 
church in the West dedicated to the Blessed Virgin Mary. It was built after the Council of Ephesus in the 5th century, after the Council of Ephesus declared Mary as the Theotokos, the Mother of God. And Mary is truly our mother because her life is a shining example of how it is to allow God to work through us. Mary followed the instructions of God faithfully. Mary was obedient to the will of God. And because of that, God was able to work wonders in the life of Mary. My dear brothers and sisters, if we follow God's will, if we are faithful to God's instructions, then we will always succeed in life. But if we insist on what we want, if we insist on our own ways, if we think as human beings does, do and not as God does, then we have all the formula to failure. Let us be like Mary. Let us be faithful and obedient to the Father. And you will be surprised at how God will work marvels in your life. As we ponder on the foundations of the Church, we pray with open hearts to God the Father for our own needs and the needs of the world. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Pope, the successor of St. Peter, may use the power of the keys wisely and according to God's plan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the power of evil may not prevail over those who maintain positions of authority in the community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all believers may never lose sight of Christ as the cornerstone and foundation of their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the sick and the aged may be supported and loved by their families and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That those who have departed from this life may find rest in the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We remember the people who requested our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Father, source of all wisdom, your Son entrusted his power to the Church. As we offer these prayers, help us to fulfill your plan for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the humanity of, our, of your only begotten Son come to, O Lord, to our aid. And may he, who at his birth from the Blessed Virgin, did not diminish but consecrated her integrity by taking from us now our wicked deeds, make our oblation acceptable to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly to the ends of the earth you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May your voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am, I am not, not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you.